Before beginning, please ensure you have the right number of boxes for the model that was purchased. It is recommended to lay out and identify all parts as indicated in the assembly instructions. The hardware has been packed according to size for your convenience. The tools you need are a Phillips or Robertson screwdriver, two each, 7 16 9 16 and one half inch wrenches, or two adjustable wrenches, and a rubber mallet. So first you're going to need the four casters, the four lock washers, and your two legs. Hold the base of the caster and tighten by hand and engage the lock on each caster. Now we're going to install the sliding frame, which is a two-person task. Please note the orientation of the handle on the frame upper slide in respect to the legs. Now we're going to install the frame upper slide pole. Place the slide pole onto the upper slide. Looking from the front of the unit, the long adjustment bolt should be on the left hand side. A rubber mallet may be required to tap in the bolts. Install the first bolt into the round hole from back to front. Repeat with the oblong hole and tighten. Do not tighten the bolts on the top. These allow the adjustment bolt to be used later when aligning the image on the board. The next step is to install the upper frame and secure the release cable. A rubber mallet may be required when installing the upper frame. Rotate the legs if necessary to align the holes for the bolts. For your safety, it is important to secure the gas cylinder at the top with a Velcro strap. Insert the end of the release cable at the bottom of the cylinder, then the groove into the clip. The cable snaps into place. Be careful! The gas cylinder is under pressure and will extend when the trigger is pulled. However, if you accidentally engage the cylinder, have one person pull the trigger while the other pulls down on the cylinder. Once recompressed, release the trigger first and then the cylinder. Now it's time to install the back supports. Looking from the front, ensure the back support with the laptop connector is on the right hand side. If necessary, rotate the legs to align the holes. Do not tighten the bolts. Next, we're going to install the upper stretchers. Make sure the gas cylinder is secured in the upright position with a Velcro strap if you've not done so already. Now we're going to install the wire management stretcher. Note the orientation of the wire management channel and attach to the rear legs using the top holes. Do not tighten so the shelf or lockbox can be installed with ease. The next step is to install the lockbox. With one person on each side, put the lockbox into position and fasten starting with the top back corners. If necessary, loosen the bolts on the wire management stretcher. Open the door on the lockbox to thread the nuts from the inside. Then bolt the front top corners in the same manner. Repeat for the back lower corners and tighten all bolts. If you have the standard model, you will install the shelf now. Install the lower stretchers first. If necessary, loosen the bolts on the wire management stretcher. Then attach the shelf stretchers. Please do not tighten bolts yet. Put the shelf into position and use the nylon spacers between the shelf and the shelf stretcher. Now you can tighten the hardware. What we're doing now is installing the projector arm pre-assembly. As one person lifts up on the upper frame, slide handle to align the holes. The other person can insert the bolts from back to front. Do not release the gas cylinder to install the bolts. If installing a 660 smart board, the upper mount bracket needs to be placed on the front of the frame with the small bar to the top. Install the bolts from back to front and do not over tighten to prevent from crushing the tubes. If installing a 680 smart board, the upper mount bracket needs to be placed on the front of the frame with a small bar to the bottom, forming a T. Install the bolts from back to front and do not over tighten to prevent crushing the tubes. The next step is to install the projector to the projector mount bracket. The projector mount plate will accommodate Epson Powerlight 410W, NEC 610S, and the Sharp PGF 267X projectors. 
Install the projector to the plate, paying close attention to the proper hole alignment for your projector as outlined in the assembly instructions. Five bolts are provided, but depending on the projector model, you may not need them all. Now we're going to fasten the face plate to the bottom roll bar. Attach the bottom roll bar to face plate first and then attach to projector mount bracket. Now it's time to install the projector arm assembly. When sliding the assembly into the projector arm, make sure it goes all the way in and sticks out the back. Now stagger the female end of the projector power cord that came with your projector just behind the head of the male end of the VGA extension cable that came with the iRover and wrap together with electrical tape. You can now feed the cables through the arm tubes without any binding or friction. Once the cables are all the way through, you can go ahead and plug them into your projector. Using the labels on the side of the projector slide, line up the holes for the appropriate projector board combination you are using. Insert a screwdriver from the bottom to clear the cables out of the way and use as a guide to insert the bolt from the top. You may need to use a rubber mallet to tap it in, again making sure it is clear of the cables. Using the wall mount bracket that came with your smart board, attach it to the iRover stand. This bracket is provided with your smart board. Ensure you install the bracket in the proper direction. Before moving on to the smart board, take a moment to tighten all fasteners on the unit. Now it's time to attach the smart board. With two people, carefully place the top back edge of the smart board frame onto the wall mounting bracket. Then secure the bottom brackets of the smart board to the iRover frame. These brackets flex and pressure may be needed to insert the bolts. Level the board once it has been secured to the frame. Here you can snap the ledge into place at the bottom of your smart board. Next step is installing the protective handles. Use the appropriate holes for the protective handles according to the size of your smart board and take into consideration if you are installing speakers. The handle should fit comfortably around your board and speakers if applicable. We are going to attach the laptop arm. To install the laptop arm, simply slide the laptop arm pre-assembly onto the connector located on the back frame. To attach the power bar to the wire management channel, simply peel and stick into position. We recommend the quick tips label be applied to the back of your smart board at eye level, making it easy to locate for future reference. When routing cables through the iRover, it's important to ensure that you have enough slack to accommodate the height adjustment. To test this, extend the board to its highest position and the laptop tray pulled out to the farthest position. Using the black split wire loom, insert all of the cables starting from the top at the projector arm. Secure the cables with the Velcro straps provided. Then lower the board to the lowest position. You should see some slack at the back. Ensure the cables are free from interference or inappropriate bunching. The recommended cable routing path is outlined in the assembly instructions. Power up the projector and laptop to project an image onto the smart board. Use the knob shown to bring the top of the image up to the top of the screen. Use the zoom and keystone settings on your computer to make a square image. Using the knob shown, adjust the projected image so that the top edge of the image is level with the top edge of the screen area on the board. Adjust the zoom and keystone if necessary to maintain a square image. To adjust the horizontal keystone, loosen the bolt shown to allow the projector to swivel to create a square image on the screen. At this point, the most important objective is to have a square image. We will shift it left or right if necessary next. You will need to use the slide pole adjustment feature to swing the arm to center the image. By turning the bolt shown, you rotate the entire projector arm one way or the other. You'll need to rotate in the direction necessary and then move to the front and adjust for a square image. If necessary, you may need to adjust the back a bit more. Carry on adjusting back to front until the image is square and centered on the board. Use the zoom and keystone functions to fill the board with a square image. Once you're satisfied with the image, tighten the bolts you loosened for the projector swivel adjust and tighten the bolts at the back of the unit on top of the slide pole adjust. You may need to do some fine tuning at the projector.